We're now going to take a look at how we could implement lists in Java by using the collections API. One of the benefits with Java is that it already has an implementation of some of the common data structures or common abstract data types. Uh, this is what we call the collections API. Now, if you, you may have heard of the term API, but it stands for the application program interface. And the list abstract data type is one of these types of data structures that's already given to us in the collections API. So why would we need to implement an ADT if it's already given for us? So if Java already provides several different types of interfaces and collections and classes and so forth for implementing these different data structures, why not just use those instead of implementing them ourselves? Now, with that said, for the purposes of this class, you will be asked to implement abstract data types without the collections API, because we need to make sure you actually understand what's going on with these different operations and with these different data structures. But afterwards, you can freely use the collections API. Let's talk a little bit about the collection interface. So the collections API comes from the java.util package. So if we do want to use the API, we have to import the java.util package. So we're talking about these collections. So what do we mean by that? Well, we say that we have this notion of a collection where we're basically storing a, well, for lack of a better word, a collection of identically typed objects. And this comes from the collection interface. So what we're saying here is that we have this collection interface that takes care of allowing us to group up identically typed objects. So whether it's a collection of integers, whether it's a collection of doubles, a collection of strings, it could be a collection of objects of some class that we create. But the collection interface will give us several different methods that we can use, or at least we can implement, that will allow us to collect a whole bunch of identically typed objects. Here's some sample code of the interface from the uh, collection interface. So we have public interface, so that already tells us we have an interface and we have a bunch of abstract methods in here. But then we have collection and then any type in angle brackets, and I'll explain what that is in just a little bit. And then we have extends, iterable, and then any type. So this tells us that this is actually uh, a subclass of the iterable class, or you can kind of think of it like a sub interface. And we see that we have several different abstract methods in here. We have a size method, we have an is empty method, a clear method, a contains method, an add method, a remove method, and then what's called an iterator. And we'll see later on how an iterator works. We'll, we'll get to that later on. I want to start by talking about this any type in angle brackets because you probably haven't seen this before. And this is simply an additional parameter that we include in our classes. And this is used to determine what is going to be the data type of the collection. And what this means is that our interface is not limited to some specific data type. We're not limited to just integers or just doubles. We can specify that later on when we're dealing with the actual implementation. So whenever we create the class that would implement the interface, we include this any type parameter. We don't do anything with it just yet. We just include it in the header of our class. So let me give you an example here. Uh, let's say I create a class that's called my list, and this is going to implement the collection interface. So we would say public class my list, and then we have any type in the angle brackets, implement collection, and then any type in the angle brackets. So this is just saying that my list is going to be a class that implements the collection interface and it's going to contain some data type. We don't specify it yet. We're just saying that it could have different data types. After we create and define the class, at this point, we still haven't specified what any type is. We use that when we actually create the object of the class. So here is where we would need to specify the data type. So let me give you an example using that my list class. So if I create an object called list, I would do my list and then I have the angle brackets and then inside of there, I would put in the data type that this object is going to be dealing with. So in this case, we say integer and then we 
call the constructor technically or instantiate the list object. We say equals new my list. And then once again, in angle brackets, we would put in integer. So this is saying that list is going to be a collection of integers. And this should look a little familiar to you because we have seen this before. If you remember when we were talking about vectors, we would have a set of angle brackets where we would decide what is going to be stored in this vector. So we can have something like vector, then angle brackets, integer list equals new vector, and then the angle brackets with integer. This is the same thing as what we're talking about here. So this any type works just as we do with vectors. It's just we use this angle brackets to specify what is going to be the data type of that particular object of our collection implementation. Now I want to take a look at some of the methods that we had in the collection interface. Now most of them are pretty obvious regarding what they do, but it's still just worth mentioning what exactly is the intention behind them. So we have the size method. So this is going to return the number of items in the collection. We have the is empty method. This is going to return true if and only if the size of the collection is zero. So if there's nothing in there, which means the size is zero, then this is going to return true. It's going to return false. Otherwise we have a contains method that we can define, and this is going to return true if some X, so we can pass some value X. If that's in the collection, this would return true. Now it should mention that the interface does not actually specify how the collection makes this decision. That's going to be determined, be determined by the actual classes that would implement the interface. Remember, the interface is just giving abstract methods. It's up to the class that implements the interface to decide how it does it. So how this contains method is actually going to work is going to depend on the implementation itself. And then we have the add and remove methods. So the add method is going to add item X into the collection and remove would just remove some item X from the collection. Um, both of these methods would return true if it works, if the operations work and false if they don't work. So just to give an example, the remove method could fail if the item is not in the collection. So if we say remove X and X is not in the collection, then this method uh, would re could return false. Another example is the add method could fail if maybe we have some rule in here that says that we can't have duplicates. So maybe we do a check to see if it's already in there. We don't add it. So if we try to add a duplicate and that fails, then the add method would return false. The last thing we'll talk about in this lecture is the iterable interface. Now, if you remember from the collection interface, we saw that it actually extended the iterable interface. So what we're saying here is that classes that implement the iterable interface. So there is another interface that's called iterable can use the for each loop to actually view all the items in the list. Now we'll talk more about this in the next lecture, but we have what's called an iterator and that allows us to um, access specific nodes in our list and do stuff with it. So let's just say we do an example here. Let's say we want to uh, print all the items in a collection. So we can have the following method. So we would have public static and then any type in brackets, uh, any angle brackets, I should say. And yes, that is correct. And then we would have void and then the method we called print. And then we would pass a collection, which we call call C O L L. And this would be a collection of some specified type. And then inside the body, we would just have a for each loop where we would have our item, which is going to be of the type of whatever our collection is. So for each item in the collection, we just simply do a print line statement to print that actual item. And what we find here is that this particular version or this implementation of this version of print is identical character for character with a corresponding implementation that we could use if call was actually of a type of an array of the any type. So this works not just for a collection of some type, but we could actually use this for an array of that same type.